All right, I've created some new layers for us and I'm just gonna introduce you to them instead of writing them out from scratch to save time. Uh, they're all here and I'll run through them one at a time. So the first one is dotted lines. It looks like this. You either get six of them or 12 of them. You get them in pink, you get them in blue. And that's basically it. So let's take a look. Um, these are all added to the layers. So we left off with simple lines, outline shape, and right under that, I've started the new one. So dotted lines, uh, let's just skip down here. Basically, um, it's moving out one step every time and creating a very small rectangle of this size, which I set up here. And that's really it. And then it rotates and does the same thing. I've added this center offset just to give it some space in the middle so that they don't all start at zero, zero. And that's for right now, just also equal to a single step out. A couple things that I've changed, just one thing I've changed up here, the layer, what this used to be stroke color, uh, because some of these layers, as we'll see, um, do not include things like stroke. Uh, I'm just giving each one of these, uh, I'm changing the name to layer color. That's the long and short of it. So I've just replaced it here and everywhere else that it showed up. Um, in some cases, you need to set a stroke separately and you can do that, but um, this makes more sense because the next one, centered shape, um, doesn't have a stroke color, so it didn't make any sense, and that's why I changed it. Um, so let's look at that one. Centered shape does pretty much exactly what you think it would do. I think it's good to run test lines with this one um, just because you wanna make sure it's where it should be. Let's run it first, test lines. Cool, so it's right in the middle, and we wanna make sure it never goes too far out either. Um, and so far so good. So it does exactly what you think it does. Oh, that one does go too far. Oh no, it doesn't because mm, no, it does. So we'll see if we can fix that together. That's what test lines is for. All right. So centered shape. Um, I'm choosing a random shape. This doesn't have to be zero one. I'm using that to decide what shape I draw and it can be a rectangle an ellipse or a hexagon. And in the case of the hexagon, I'm just rotating a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get one there so that the bottom ends up down here. Nice like that. Cause I think that's what happens a lot of the time. Yeah, they're always, I think they're always situated like that when it's drawn as a solid shape. So that's the basic logic. Let's see if we can troubleshoot this. Uh, the shape size is a floor between um, the, so I don't want it to be too small. So I said, starting with, um, you know, four, basically, because this dot steps out is set here. It's eight. Uh, where was I? Centered shape. Between four and this steps out. Um, that should be down to seven. That should make sense. Oh, but then I'm multiplying it. Maybe that's what it is. Let's try this. Does that ruin things? Not really. That seems... Oh. We did it again. So that didn't help. Um, times this dot single step. So basically I'm, I'm saying anywhere between four and eight. Ah, uh, you know what? Times this single step. Okay, so between four and then, yep. So it's giving us a radius basically of, of that size. And in the case of ellipse, we use that radius um, Mm-hmm. In a rect, we're multiplying it by two. We should probably be doing that here too. Let's try it. And then in the case of a hexagon, we're fine. Okay, so yeah, ellipse. Let's see if we can get an ellipse to go too big. Or if it's just the rectangle. Oh, I know why the rectangle makes sense because it can go all the way out to there because of its shape, that's all it is. I forget, I built this a couple weeks ago before I started actually doing the tutorials, so I've forgotten what's what. And so that's actually okay by our, our, our system constraints, our design constraints, that's totally fine. And I'm glad we caught this mistake with the ellipse. It should have been times two so that it can grow as big as it wants. If you wanted to limit the size of these, just knock off the, the times two or even divide it by something if you want them all to be super small. Um, if you want them to be able to be smaller, you can also change this because that's limiting it as well. So these are all subjective choices that I've made and you can tweak them however you see fit. 
So that is centered shape. We can get rid of that. We can comment that out. Let's check out ring of shapes. Cool, so it's what you think. It's six shapes and it can either be uh, a circle, a triangle or a rectangle and they can be filled or they can just be outlines. Great, so let's go in there. I was doing some troubleshooting earlier so I have some stuff being printed out here. Um, let me take those out for you. Okay, so everything here, uh, this looks very complicated, but um, basically let's skip down here and work our way backwards. So I choose um, a random shape number. That's a, a number between zero and one. And it comes back and I use that if it's, uh, there's a one in three chance basically for it to be an eclipse, eclipse, an ellipse, rectangle, or a triangle. Now triangle was tricky because um, I had to draw it in a custom way. So I've created a function that does that here and you can check it out in the helpers file if you're really interested. Moving back to this, um, and then we rotate and then we you know keep drawing that thing over and over again. So the stuff that we need for these is a center, a radius, what else, and a direction. So the, the triangles can be facing out or they can be facing in. Let's see if we can get one where it's facing in. It may take a while, so this may not be worth our effort. There's one, cool. So the direction, face in or face out, we can use our handy random select too. Uh, the fill color is um, either going to be the, the layer color that's chosen or I fill it with transparent, all right? Uh, that's just black at um, full alpha transparency. And then the weight of the stroke is also calculated. And then basically what's happening here is I want to make sure that this is a perfect example, that if we draw one of these shapes, it doesn't, the edge of the shape does not extend beyond the edge of the crystal. And to do that, uh, what I'm doing is choosing, basically I'm saying if the position, um, so this dot steps, right? I'm choosing which step to be the place where I draw this thing. If, I, if I'm doing it here, between halfway and the origin or the center, then I want to make sure that the radius um, is less than the, the total possible radius of that length between halfway here and the origin. In other words, I don't want it to overlap the origin. I don't want it to go further than the origin. And then the same is true over here. I don't want it to go further than the outside if it's over halfway this way. And then if it's right at the middle, which is here, um, then I, I tell it exactly what I want it to be. Okay, so that's that. And just I'm controlling the overall size based on its position along this line. If it's this way, I don't want it to extend past this. If it's this way, then I don't want it to extend past this. And if it's right in the middle, it can be anywhere within a range that I, I tell it to be. In this case, between one and, yeah, between one and, and the edge. So between one and the edge. All right, that's that. Um, there's nothing else special going on there. Just, just see it again. Let's do it with uh, the test line so you can see that and make sure that it's working the way we want it to. Okay, so those did not extend past. That's nice. They don't extend too far in either. See how those guys are limited? That's really great. Now you may find exceptions in there somewhere and that's cool, you know, go in there, troubleshoot, tell me how you did it. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking good. Oh, that was a perfect example. I can't go back though, because this is, there's no history involved. Oh, that one was a good one too. All right, enough of that. Get rid of this. And lastly, the, ooh, what did I just do? The stepped hexagons. Cool, so here's one with 10 steps out, 10 pink. There's one with eight pink, thin, thin, thick. Cool, so we have all of our options there. Um, you remember that we have a hexagon um, function in here that we created a long time ago. And I'm just using that, here it is. And I'm just drawing as however many I need for the number of steps. There's also this space in between. 
I've created a center offset here, and I've just decided on a ratio of 15% of the um, radius should be cleared before I start creating that. And then I divide that up and draw my hexagons out um, and the regular stuff here. So that's it. So I just wanted to introduce you to those. Uh, and now we're going to um, come up with a more organized way of doing our picker. So this will be like picker part three.